You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. Thank you very much for joining us for episode 892. Really, really appreciate you being here. Really appreciate all the questions. We really appreciate when folks subscribe. That helps. And also when you share and leave reviews. All that stuff is tremendously helpful and tremendously appreciated. Totally true. Totally true. We really do appreciate that, guys. It means a lot to us. Also appreciate you being a part of growing this community. If you're not a part of the DroneU community, just go to DroneU.education today. Become, become a part of it. What's the cost? Well, give it a try for a dollar. One dollar, give it a try. Look, everyone wants to peek behind the curtain. What's really really going on? Well, for a dollar, you can find out. One dollar, not that much. Not that much. I thought you were going to go somewhere else. Uh, I know. Though. You I thought myself, about it. Oh, I sure did. I sure <laughs> did. Anyway. Well done. <laughs> Maturity. I'm 30 now. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Getting old. Uh, I'm getting old. Yeah. John McBride would slap me if he was here. Anyway, um, all right, so let's get into today's question. Hey, Paul. Hey, Rob. My name is Adam. I just passed the 107 certificate test about a week ago, and I still have never flown a drone. Uh, I work with them in the military, have for about 15 years, and I've uh, just kind of taken my time with it, seeing what happens next. But curious as to what drone to spend money on right now. I want to do some photogrammetry. I want to do some uh, modeling. I want to do some uh, all sorts of stuff, uh, more on the high end geospatial side, since that's my background. So do I wait for the Phantom five to come out? Just when it be a uh, black Friday or whenever they want to release that for the holidays or go ahead and get a Mavic two pro with that one inch sensor and work with it. And we'll go, uh, just kind of get my, I guess my feet wet. So I don't know, uh, seeing if you have any advice on what drone for me to get into this business if i should wait for the phantom five or not thank you awesome thank you adam and i'm gonna gonna actually make a plea not a very serious plea but i love or we love and it's actually helpful hearing when you send in a question where you're from so i would really appreciate that if when you guys call in with your question just so and so from alexandria virginia there you go and you Poughkeepsie, New York. I don't know why Poughkeepsie, New York always comes to mind. That's where you were born? My... No, 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 no. Oh. That's just what comes to mind. <laughs> I was like, what? I thought you were from Farmington. <laughs> no, and, and I don't mean where you were born. I mean where you are, right? Where you're at now. Where you're Is that be... where your mind's at right now is Poughkeepsie, New York? I, no, it's just when I think about a place, and for whatever reason, I was working there years and years ago, and that place just stuck with me for various reasons. I'm not going to bore you with, but I was born in Tucson, Arizona, if you must know. So, uh, anyways, thank you for the question, Adam. Appreciate it. I think it's pretty cool that he's already got all this great experience from the military that just feeds right into some pretty high-end stuff he can do with his drone, whichever one he should buy. Yes, yes. And I also think this is a great opportunity for anyone who's listening to this show thinking, if I'm, you know, I want to add a drone into my team or into our business, or we're starting a drone team at our company, whether you're in public safety, whether you're in construction, whether you're in engineering, uh, whether you're in a lot of industrial applications, this is actually a topic that is kind of uh, become close to the chest, especially since hearing some friends, uh, you know who you are, having these conversations over the phone when people are talking about, I'm so sick of people spending $10,000 on one drone and not learning about it and not paying for an education and not truly understanding what they can and cannot do with that drone. Well, they're heard, only hurting themselves by doing that. They are. Yeah, yeah, they are. And, you know, this argument kind of, you know, gains even more power now that the Phantom 4 Pro RTK is out. But, you know, this particular person who runs a federal agency, you know, he, he said, you know, everyone can do this work with a Phantom. You don't need a big expensive machine to do, you know, mapping grade work. You don't need a big expensive machine to get good video. You don't need a big expensive machine to get good quality photos. What you want is a seamless, convenient, easy to use and easy to deliver 
um, tool or a tool that makes it easy to deliver, excuse me. And that has consistently been a phantom over and over again. Um, this person also said maybe instead of spending $10,000 on an M200 series and a couple of cameras, maybe spend $1,500 on a drone, buy a case, buy all the batteries, buy some GCPs, buy a GPS, and buy training. I'm not just putting the training in there. This is what this person actually said, that people need to invest in the training. Mm -hmm. um, He's like, you can do so much more with that and understand the limitations of what you can do and what you can't do with just a $1,500 drone. He's like, people don't understand that like some of the biggest nuances between these drones come down to the type of camera shutter they have and the type of flight modes that they have. I mean, it's literally that simple because, and I'm learning this too in building the ultimate mapping drone, right? Having this big 42 megapixel sensor is awesome on the drone, but now I've got to figure out a way to geotag the images. And now I got to figure out a way to control the camera from the ground. And are you really gaining enough for the extra work exactly. from that? Exactly. And typically the answer is not always yes. Yeah. Um, so what's, okay, well, at the I end of the day, at the end of the day, a company needs to deliver a product, right? And they need to be able to do it over and over again and create a system to do that and then have tools that are reliable enough to work in that system. Because if the tools are not reliable enough, and this has been, again, another big problem with the M600, 200, 100, 210 series, is they're not reliable. Right. And, when, and when you don't have a reliable machine or you're constantly learning how to, you know, continue to use it, that's problematic. It and is. when you have a phantom that, always starts up at the same time, you know, if you're doing your IMU calibrations and your GPS calibrations, um, or your compass calibrations, excuse me, you know you're going to have a drone that works pretty much every time. If there's an issue with the drone, you know typically it's a firmware issue. So Yeah, and I think that you you get caught with illusions of grandeur of what the business is going to look like because some of that, that you, you talk about, that high-end 42 megapixel camera, et cetera, et cetera, you might need that for 5% of the market. Yeah. Whereas you should be spending your time and your effort and your energy on the 95%, which you can do with the Phantom. I mean, you need to think to yourself, too, like, what type of drone team do you want to build? And I think you need to start with, well, let's build the initial deliverables that we know can help our business. Let's educate our team development guy, whoever is going to be running the drone program, as much as possible. Give him the resources to educate himself and do the research to figure out how we can better implement this data and maybe other workflows when I give the example of, you know, Jason Danello from Florida, perfect example of this, mm -hmm. that, you know, his company gave him the reins, the resources and the money to say, we need to figure out how to deliver Alta surveys faster than anyone else. And we need to know how we can deliver that in a, in a unique system to, you know, speed up our efficiency, get better data and make That's better decisions. That's a lot decisions. of volume they're talking about. So you've got to have a good system for that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, you, all you need is a phantom. So if you're thinking about, you know, what money to spend on your drone team, number one, what industry are you in? Are you in construction, engineering, surveying? So are you going to be doing lots of drone mapping, right? If you're going to be doing drone mapping, you're probably going to need a good GPS system if you don't already have one. You're probably going to need some good ground control points. Drone new landing pads are almost ready. Um, <laughs> you're also going to need a good drone, lots of batteries, and a case, okay? You're typically going to need an iPad or your phone or a crystal sky unit uh, in order to fly it, right? You're not just buying a drone, right? You look at that drone, it's $7,000. Are you getting a case? Are you getting extra batteries? Are you getting a tablet? Are you getting everything that you need to work with that drone? Because I really think that people will learn an exponential amount when they get to know the tools that they're working with, when they get sure. to know how to process imagery in photogrammetry, and they get to know how to export that data in a file format that works for them mm -hmm. so they can take that data and make actionable steps on it, right? Everyone wants to know how to use Pix4D Capture Reality to do all these things. And then they get to understanding it and they're like, well, how do I output a deliverable? Right. And it's like, let's go through this really quick. So, I mean, like with, I mean. Hence the training, by the yes. way. Yes. And by the way, at the end of our last class in San Diego, I had gone over how to show people how to upload their maps so that their clients could visualize them. But I also showed how you would export a specific deliverable for, say, a golf course, which was a DXF file. So, 
And DXF is used significantly in the engineering construction planning world. Hmm. So if you're not familiar with that, you should get to familiar with that. But anyway, long story short, I mean, it's a really, I'm glad he's asking this question, right? Because this question doesn't only apply to DSPs, drone service providers. It also applies to construction companies that are trying to get into drones. They're right. building a drone team. Should they spend $10,000, $5,000 on a drone? Should they buy an Inspire 2 Um you know, instead of a Phantom 4 Pro, because yes, the Inspire 2 has the X4S camera, and yes, it can probably map in windier conditions than a Phantom can, but at the end of the day, look at the cost you're spending on batteries to do the same mapping missions. Look, I can do a large mapping mission, a, a golf course I know takes 12 extended life batteries if I do it right. Can you imagine buying 12 sets of Inspire 2 batteries? Or even those. Yeah. So for one, so for the machine that you guys cannot see on camera is an M600 Pro right here below the camera, um, and it's eight hundred and ninety six dollars, I believe, for a set of batteries to outfit that for mm -hmm. basically fourteen minutes, fifteen minutes. Yep, give or take. Yeah. Wow. As the finance guy, that makes you cringe. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone just kind of got a visual of it. <laughs> I'm wishing I had vodka in here. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about that. <laughs> but this, uh, I think Adam's in a unique situation in that he's pretty well versed in a lot of the advanced aspects of flying a drone and, and creating deliverables for clients, as he's described. At least, you know, that's, that's what he says. But then he's also asking, should I get the Mavic Pro 2 or the Mavic 2 Pro? Um, so Mavic 2 Pro is a great machine for photography and videography. Um, I would say that I actually like the way that the Phantom 2 Pro flies over um, an, a Phantom 4 Pro version 2, but I just removed the quiet props from the version 2, put the old ones on, and reset the gains, and my machine was fine. So um, the Mavic 2 Pro is, again, great for videography and photography. I actually think DJI has like a plan up their sleeve because the GPS puck on the Mavic 2 Pro is great garbage. And I don't know if it's because it's getting a lot of interference from mm. the motor fields that are like literally on the same vertical plane as the compass itself or what it is. But I've done a comparison now three separate times flying three separate drones to create the same map. I cannot tell you how many times with the Mavic 2 Pro I've gotten horrible GPS readings. And I'm thinking that this is on purpose because if the GPS doesn't get good readings, typically the guys who go to Best Buy and pick a Mavic 2 Pro up are going to be able to fly it in places that they can't fly it. Or they're not supposed to fly it. Right. Because the GPS unit, I mean, like, dude, I've been getting GPS readings in Qatar. And I haven't left the United States. Yeah, that's a problem. And I know that this is happening with other people who have the Mavic 2 Pro as well. So it's not that just we got a lemon. No, it's, uh, oh, by the way, the, the I have finally figured out the standard error for Mavic 2 Pros sends your GPS to Ghana. Ghana. Huh. In Africa. So pretty much you're going to be able to fly anywhere in the United States because it's going to think it's in Ghana. Interesting. Yeah. So Mavic 2 Pro, yeah, it's great for photos and videos. Um, in fact, I just remembered that I've got some footage on the Mavic 2 Pro that I need to give to Howell. But for what you're talking about, Adam, and the things that you described in your question, and ultimately, obviously, for everybody, this comes down to budget, or at least a significant factor is budget. It doesn't sound like the Mavic 2 Pro would be the way to go. For the things that you mentioned doing, it's probably going to be a phantom. Uh, look, yeah, look, does a Mavic 2 Pro have the cool hype? Is it the cool thing to take out of your bag and show someone while you're on vacation and get some cool shots? Yes. Yes, it is. Is it the drone that you're going to get respect for when you show up to a job to take care of things? No. No, it's not. Well, is a phantom that? Do you think there's respect I, for a phantom? I think Just that there is respect that because look at every piece huh. of advertising from any company doing anything drones. It's got a phantom in it. It's like That's everyone true. knows. It's like an iPhone. Oh, you've got an iPhone? All right, I know it can it can do. Right. And instead of like, oh, you've got a Huawei phone from China, cool. What can it do? Oh, it can charge my phone too. Cool, give me that thing. <laughs> 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 that was actually their press release this morning. Is that Huawei was like, we make a phone that can charge other people's phones. No way. Yeah. Huh. That's an interesting marketing strategy. <laughs> I just like the fact in the new expedition, I just put my phone. Literally on the center console, it starts charging. 
Really? Mm -hmm. That's worth 90 grand. (laughs) (laughs) Your $90,000 phone charger. Gosh, isn't that true? Uh, But anyway, going back to it, if you're looking to start a drone group, a drone team, a project drones, you're trying to get into research in your company to see if you can provide whatever you're doing information at a faster pace to uh, better your bottom line. Don't look past the Phantom. Phantom 4 Pro, Phantom 4 Pro version 2, Phantom 4 Pro RTK. Those are your options. Like, I mean, it is the best by far, hands down, no questions asked. There's a reason why DJI represents such a large portion of the market. Ease and convenience. Frozen vegetables, people. If you don't remember the analogy about frozen vegetables. Yeah, they're very functional. If you don't remember, phantoms are like frozen vegetables. Carry on. Okay, phantoms are like frozen vegetables <laughs> because, like the food store, right? Think of like the food store as photography. There's so many different tools you can use to get photos. But a lot of people don't like going into the regular fruit section because they've got to cut up the fruit, they got to cut up the veggies, takes extra time, takes extra work. We're typically living in a society where we have less and less time to eat. So people buy the frozen vegetables. Mm -hmm. I buy the frozen vegetables. I love the little Asian packet that has like the snow peas and the onions and like the red peppers. Used them last night and it was great. Yeah, see, (laughs) exactly. Frozen vegetables exist for one reason and one reason alone. And that is because it is easy and convenient for you to buy because they're already pre-packaged and consistent. Yeah, that's true. So Phantom is like your frozen vegetables. It's easy and convenient to fly. The next DJI marketing campaign. <laughs> Can't wait to see that. You're going to see like slow mo of like peas and carrots coming out of a bag. And then like the Phantom Blade just like chopping them up. And then it goes into the bag and it's your frozen vegetables. See, there you go. Maybe it would work. <laughs> hey, I got a creative mind. We could keep doing Apparently. this. <laughs> well, guys, that's going to do it for us today. Please leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you download the podcast. That helps other people find out this information. And that helps us, which we would greatly appreciate. So um, thanks again for listening to the show. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. (laughs) 